Hello and thank you for joining us on the Pigskin Preview. Alongside head coach of the Western Illinois football team, Bob Nielsen, I'm Andrew Bacon. Coach, uh, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for, okay. yeah, it is, it's a very nice day. It's, uh, we might get a little bit uh, sweaty if you notice, so just bear with us here, but um, we're going to get started here. Last weekend, the Leathernecks took on the South Dakota Coyotes for the conference opener. And coach, going into the game, this is your first conference opener this season and also for your career. So how important is it to start off with a win? Conference games uh, when in the Missouri Valley Conference uh, are all going to be battles. And, uh, you know, to get off to a, a good start with a win, particularly when you're playing at home, uh, is, was really important to our football program and in and, uh, and our team. And, and so I was really uh, pleased not only with the win, but the way we played. Uh, we played the way that uh, we needed to play and, and, uh, um, and, and emphasize the things that going into the game we knew we needed to emphasize to win. All right, and then last Saturday was not only game day, but it was also Coach Nielsen's birthday. And so, Coach, that's kind of a cool thing to have your conference opener on your birthday, but, I mean, it's a pretty st stressful day normally. So I guess what are your thoughts on having a birthday on game day? Well, when you have a birthday in the fall as a football coach, it happens about every seven years. So, um, you know, you kind of just don't pay a lot of attention to it. Actually, I think, you know, the team made a bigger deal out of it than <laughs> I normally would. But that was certainly a special day, a special day. I had some family here uh, and a special day with the win. Yeah, and as you said, a great gift to get the win. That's always probably the best present you can get on game day when you have your birthday. And so we're going to go ahead and check out the highlights as the Leathernecks would win 24 to 10. So let's toss it out to Nico Hefflinger and Garrett Kanak. Up the middle and a big gain and a first down for the 50 yarder. The kick is up. It looks like it's got the distance. Wow. And that is just missed it. Yes, short. Miles Bergner. Hunting for the first time. Good punt there from Bergner. Caught by Antoine Ford. He's going to have a little room to work with and he eludes a tackle, but it's tripped up back. Gets to about the 25. Another handoff to Nico, and he's got a little bit of room up the middle. Able to have a stiff arm, break a tackle, and truck the player over, and another first down, a gain of 15. Block down to five. A handoff Nico to Nico Watson, and a nice block, and another first down, and then some. Field with the running game. Another handoff to Baker, and he's going to cut back inside. Great run from Baker. And pick up another. First down, going to be first and goal. Up and this one is going to be up and through the uprights. Go. Kenupin's first field goal of the season. Raffles right up on the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a swing pass to the outside. Terrence Terry bowling over Antoine Ford. Anderbot looking to his left all the way, and that is going to be out of reach. And an incomplete pass brings up fourth down. Berger and a high snap, and that's going to be over the head. He's being chased down by Chip Holschlag, and he touches on the ground. That's going to be picked up by Kevin Kitzel. Kevin Kitzel, a touchdown for the Lonex. Kevin Kitzel's second touchdown this season. Four wide set, third and three, and a handoff. Or actually, a keeper by Vandermotten and fighting his way into Leatherneck territory, getting to a very manageable field goal as Bergner is going to split the uprights. As we saw there, after the first half, the Leathernecks lead 10 to three. Coach, being up only seven, I noticed that the offense struggled at times to get down the field. They were only one for seven on third down. What was your thoughts? Well, uh, we needed to play better offensively. We talked uh, about that to our, to our team in the halftime. Uh, we talked about the fact that, hey, we, we were capable of, of moving the ball with more consistency. We needed to create some, uh, some plays on the perimeter and, and uh, uh, we really felt that scoring two more touchdowns uh, would would be uh, you know what we needed to do and actually talk specifically to our team about hey we need two touchdowns in this half to kind of put the game away uh, with the way we're, our defense was was playing uh, we felt that that would be enough scoring and uh, you know they followed through and got two touchdowns uh, we had some opportunities I think to score more and that's one of the things as we uh, go into the rest of the conference schedule we're going to have to be more productive offensively. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and see those highlights after this. Stay tuned. You're watching the Pigskin Preview.
I'm one unlucky guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Welcome back to the Pigskin Preview. As we just saw, the Leathernecks are currently up 10-3. to 3. And so, Coach, being up by just a touchdown, what did you say in the locker room to the team to kind of, you know, say that we are, we're up, but we need to get more? Um, just we made some subtle adjustments. Uh, not, uh, you know, not really anything significant. We, we thought our plan going in was, was uh, capable of continuing to, to work. Um, we just wanted to, to make sure that, uh, um, uh, that, we, that we got a couple of things emphasized. And, and uh, what happened is on the second, you know, in the second half, we were able to, to break a couple of uh, big, uh, uh, bigger plays uh, that set up uh, scoring opportunities for us. And and um, I think uh, you know that in itself was really the the boost that we needed. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second half. New. South Dakota sending just three. A lot of time for Norvell, and he's going to throw it. And that's going to be picked off by Tyler Starr, brought down by Lance Lenore. Back on the field. And he swing pass out to Bama. Brought Kinsel. down in the backfield by Kinsel. Two touchdowns on the season is something we've talked about. As Western almost jumping off sides. That's going to be a handoff spin move by Roberts. And a nice tackle Just there by back Butler. To the line of scrimmage. Just three plays ago. We'll see what Vandermont can do. Another next defense sending some pressure. And he's going to be brought down by Gino Durley for the sack. Drop back into coverage. It's going to be a handoff to Nico Watson. Rue up the middle. Hang on to the and football. getting in, <laughs> still on his feet, crossing the 30-yard line, which is something new we haven't seen in the first four weeks. Another handoff to Nico, and tripped up, but gain of six yards. We're starting to see him go to the air a bit more. We'll see if he can make some completions. He takes a big hit, but he's got a man downfield. I see Scott inside the 10-yard line. From the red shirt freshman. Wishbone formation. Again, another handoff to Nico. He that hit. time he's in for the touchdown. What a drive by this Western Illinois offense. 95 yards down the field. Just like to give a, a big thank you to the broadcasting department for everything they have done for us as second and 10, a big completion to Terrence Terry. And that is, I believe, the, biggest, the longest completed pass of the game. 98 total yards coming into the second half, they have 228 now. That's back-to-back -back passing plays there. Both quarterbacks have really stepped up here in the second half after their struggles in the first as Eddie Holschlag in the backfield. Chip right there as well, but pass completed as Vanderbilt was able to elude the pressure. Their offense throughout this game, but the passing has really come alive here lately. Vanderbilt is going to be leg, and he's going to have a ton of room up the right side and dive just short of a first down inside the Leatherneck 10-yard line. Vanderbotten passing once again all the time in the world, and finally he's going to take off as he's able to power through the tackle. And come up to 12 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Hand off to Roberts, breaks a tackle, and into wow. the end zone. And what? just like that, the Coyotes are right back in this ballgame. J.C. Baker started out wide. He's sent in motion, a little pitch to him. Can he get the edge? and? He gets there, but is brought down by Austin Johnson, who's having a very nice game. Illinois with just under 11 to play in the fourth quarter. Third and five, five wide set. Norvell rolls out and in. He's going to hit Joey Borsellino for a first down. Well, under center, handoff to J.C. Baker, and he's going to find some room. He's going to bounce this to the outside. It's, it's a all foot race now. Inside the 20, inside the 10, and a touchdown. As Dixie, they are going to say he stepped out what of bounds. What a run from J.C. Baker. That might have just put him over 100 yards right there. 
Different look here for Western Illinois offense. Throw it up to the back corner. Great That's a touchdown from the freshman. Joey Borsolino. And another touchdown for the Leathernecks. We've got a two possession game that once is again. A as we saw there, the Leathernecks won 24 to 10. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the stats. Trent Norvell would finish 11 of 23 for 102 yards, had a touchdown, however, he also had an interception. Also, J.C. Baker and Nico Watson had a pretty good day as they both combined for 200 yards. J.C. Baker also added 33 reception yards on five catches. Nico Watson had the touchdown on the ground. Going to South Dakota, they had two quarterbacks play in the game, Josh Vandermaten, who, had eight, who was 8 of 21 with 26 yards. He struggled against the Leathernecks passing defense. However, he is a dual threat quarterback and he rushed for 48 yards. Kevin Earl had a little bit better of a night or a better of a day, finishing 7 of 13 for 88 yards. And then Jordan Roberts, the running back for South Dakota, had the touchdown for the Coyotes. And so, Coach, what I, I noticed a little bit that the offense, after Trent Norvell's first interception, they seemed to be a little bit more comfortable. They were able to get a couple touchdowns, as we talked about earlier. What was the difference between the first half and the second half? Uh, well, I thought our team responded to a couple of uh, adverse situations. Um, you know, when we turned the ball over, defense went out, uh, stopped them um, in three plays, uh, forced a punt, and, and then after South Dakota made the drive uh, to uh, uh, get back within a score, um, offensively came on the field, uh, made a great drive. JC had the, the big run that, uh, that uh, set up uh, Trenton's uh, touchdown pass to Joey Borsellino and, and really put the game away with the two-score lead there uh, in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, it, it, right now offensively, we, we feel like we've made some improvement in our running game. We just have to kind of catch up uh, with the passing game. We've got to get Trenton feeling more comfortable uh, in the system, making quicker decisions. We've got to get our receivers uh, you know, running a little bit sharper, crisper routes uh, so that uh, he has a, a place to go with the football uh, because balance is going to be critical um, for us as we play uh, better defensive football teams throughout the conference schedule. And speaking of the offense, having that balance, obviously the offensive line is very key and they allowed no sacks last week and that's a great stat for them. And so how have you seen this unit improve despite some injuries? Uh, they're gaining confidence. You know, they're gaining confidence in playing together. They're gaining confidence in our scheme. Um, you know, the the leadership in the group with with Jeff Lindsay and and Jimmy Holtzlog as seniors, and and now we're seeing some of the younger players start to emerge, like Orion Ricketts, who has to make a lot of our our line calls and and uh, uh, communication uh, on on the field and. Uh, I think we're, we're making less mistakes. Uh, you know, in this league, you're, you're never going to win every battle physically, but if you can eliminate the mental mistakes, and uh, you've got a chance to, to be consistent offensively. And then speaking of left tackle Jeff Lindsay, I talked to him about the offensive line's performance from last weekend. Sully definitely stepped up uh, last game. Um, you know, me and Jimmy being the uh, anchors on the outside, the, the inside three definitely had a great game against South Dakota. Uh, I was surprised at how they played, and I was just glad that they, you know, showed improvement that game. And it's, it's, it makes me want to improve even more, you know, to keep that lead on the uh, on uh, the five of us. Left tackle Jeff Lindsay is an is a key asset for the Leathernecks. Last year, he won the West Stevens Offensive Lineman of the Year award. Jeff Lindsay's native of Bolingbrook, Illinois where last year Jeremy Curry, also a player who used to play for Bolingbrook, Illinois, joined the Leathernecks. This week, Jeff Lindsay and Jeremy Curry are the Pigskin Previews featured players. Before Jeremy Curry and Jeff Lindsay arrived at Western Illinois, both played at another school previously. Lindsay played at Quincy University for a year and then transferred to the Leathernecks in 2010, and Curry transferred from Eastern Michigan to Western Illinois in 2012. With these two players formerly high school teammates, Lindsay was a way Curry could find out what it would be like joining the Leatherneck family. Truthfully, the family atmosphere was one of the things that I was mainly looking for is um, I was looking for a new home as far as transferring and uh, Western really provided that. I told him, you know, because I transferred here back in uh, 2010 and I was pretty much, you know, I was like I fought for a starting spot and I was uh, scout team player of the year that year. and. You know, I told him about Macomb and, you know, it's not a big town, but when you meet friends and you uh, meet new people, it's, it's a nice place to be. I had traveled to uh, 
a couple of other schools in the conference as far as transferring. And uh, once I made a phone call, you know, to Jeff and asked him about how it was at Western, he really gave me a positive perspective of uh, where I would be and where we were headed as far as the team and the university. So. I was closer to home too as well and uh, that all paid a huge impact on me. I pretty much, you know, was glad that he was able to come here and I, I knew from high school the way that he played, you know, he would be a great asset to be on the team. He was ecstatic. Um, it's always fun to play beside a guy that uh, you come from the same high school with, um, you have that same passion, you had then, uh, you bring that competitive uh, out deal. Um, between you two, uh, you push each other, and uh, you bring that piece of family from back home to a group of guys and embrace that upon them and try to really show them uh, why we came from uh, Bolingbroke and why we're so ecstatic about playing them beside each other once again. Curry and Lindsay come from Bolingbroke High School, one of the top high schools for football in all of Illinois. The program is in 8A football, the highest level of football in Illinois, and are constantly producing Division I talent year in and year out. Just a year ago we won, uh, finally brought home a state title. Um, year after year, being runner up, um, we were really hungry for that. Um, but Bolingbrook football is like no other. Um, I always say that, I always tell people that we're one of a kind around the country. Um, when you come out of there, you're gonna get an athlete that's hungry and that's, you know, uh, quite different in uh, mindset as far as this uh, game of football. Um, we really take it uh, personally. Um, most of us have been playing this game since you know we were four years old. So uh, to have the opportunity, the um, guy willing um, ability to play at the Division One level is uh, all of our dreams as kids, and we really uh, make sure that that's our main uh, goal as far as uh, pursuing our education as well and furthering that. The football team are underneath uh, John Ivlo. It's you know it's always a team that you can look forward to watching. Um, he he gets us you know right in the weight room with the uh, strength. Uh, he has powerlifting every off season, so the guys are always you know building and uh, always maintaining their strength throughout the season. Jeremy Curry comes from quite the athletic background. Two of his uncles played in the NFL. His dad played major league baseball. And finally, his brother played collegiate football and basketball and went on to play arena football. There are you know, a lot of high standards that I'm held upon uh, as far as my career and uh, what I'm looking to do in my future as far as football. Uh, my family, as you said, is a, is a huge sports-oriented family. And uh, it's a bit uh, humbling me, though, um, as far as being here at Western and things of that sort because you come from the Division 1A level to the 1AA level and you really notice that it's quite the same. There's no difference among that. And uh, that's something that all of those people that you spoke of as far as my family, my father, my, both of my uncles and my brother uh, have all made sure that they explained to me that uh, there, there's no difference in where you play at. Um, if you're good enough, you can play anywhere and you can show the pros that uh, it doesn't matter rather you're at Western Illinois if you're at a um, BCS school as far as like Alabama and the big schools like that. As long as you have the passion, you can go out there and play this game. My father had no dad, so his main objective was that he never wanted to really push anything upon me. It was my option as far as uh, whether I wanted to go with baseball or football. I was more of a contact guy, so I chose the football route and things of that sort. But uh, he always supported me, supported me in my decisions and supported me in this game, right along with my mother. Uh, they really made sure that they would do without so that I could do with, with this game and it's really guided me where I'm at today, so I'm blessed. Coach, those two upperclassmen, Jeremy Curry and Jeff Lindsay, are very key for the Leathernecks. Jeff Lindsay, obviously, is starting left tackle, and then also Jeremy Curry, a rotational defensive end. He also is very key on special teams. Can you talk about what these guys do for the Leathernecks? Well, both of them are, are examples of team players. You know, Jeff as an offensive lineman, you know, offensive linemen never get much recognition. Um, a guy that's battled his way through the, the, the years to be an every down player. Uh, He's undersized uh, for an offensive lineman in our league, so he has to rely on technique and toughness. And so Jeff brings that, uh, you know, to our football team. Uh, you know, Jeremy's a guy that's uh, one of those guys that'll do 
uh, anything for the team. Uh, started out as a linebacker. We've ended up now moving him to, to defensive end. He's one of our better pass rushers. You're going to see him more and more as he's gotten co more comfortable in that position. You're going to see him more and more on the field. And another guy that just does everything right. Uh, he's, he uh, uh, represents our program exceptionally well. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. But stay tuned as we do have the two-minute drill coming up next with Ryan Ricketts. And will I be able to stump him this week? I got Trenton Norvell last week. Let's see if we can get Ryan Ricketts. You're watching the Pigskin Preview. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Learn the others today. Welcome back to the Pigskin Preview. We're here for the two-minute drill with Ryan Ricketts, starting center for the Leathernecks. How are you today? Good and yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Ready to get this two-minute drill going? Sounds good, yep. Don't don't want to get stumped here. I got Trent Norvell last week, so okay. you got to try and beat him out there. I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and begin. What has uh, what has it been like starting for the Leathernecks this year? It's been neat. Uh, it's been a great experience so far. Um, obviously, when you're out playing, it's uh, a lot more fun than on the sidelines. So it's been <laughs> cool this year. And then, uh, what's it like being able to play? The, you know, be more of a play caller than like the offensive guard or the offensive tackle. It's fun. Uh, you know, you got to do a little bit more preparation. Know the defensive fronts and what they're doing and their blitzes and all that stuff. And, it neat, it's neat. It gives you a little bit more responsibility, I guess you might say. And then what's something most people don't know about you? Um, I'd say I love to read the newspaper. I wake up in the morning and uh, read the newspaper, whether it be <laughs> online or the hard copy. And then uh, what is your major? Ag business is my major. And then if you could do anything after college, what would you do? Uh, it would be the ideal job, I think, would be take over the family farm. Okay, there you go. It ma matches with your major there. Yep. And then. Um, if you could play any other position besides offensive line, what would you play? Uh, I'd say probably wide receiver. Wide receiver. I think it would be fun to catch some passes out there, throw them from Trenton. Do you have a touchdown dance or anything? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to work on that. You, you might, I mean, who knows? Maybe a fumble happens, you pick it up and take it in the end zone, you know? There you go. That'd be nice. <laughs> and then um, if you could play any other sport, what would you play? Uh, it would definitely be hockey. Hockey's uh, my second favorite sport. Ramming people into the walls? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that and the slap shots. <laughs> And then uh, going to the NFL, what are some players that you looked up to then, and the, or back then and then now? Um, I'd say Olin Krutz, uh, the uh, former Bears center, and also Brian Urlacher were players I looked up to quite a bit. A lot of leadership there. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, what are going staying with the NFL? What are some Super Bowl teams that you have to make it? Um, hopefully the Bears make it. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite team. But if I had to pick one right now, I'd probably say the uh, Denver. Uh, the Broncos look pretty good with Peyton Manning uh, throwing it around. And the NFC, you're going with uh, not the Patriots, but you're going with the Bears, right? Yeah, that's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, Jay Cutler's looked really well with this offense, a lot better than the last couple uh, years. Yeah, I think uh, the new coach, Coach Tressman, is doing a good job with him, and um, I like what he's done so far, at least from what I've seen. All right, and that's all the time we have for you on the two-minute drill. Make sure you stay tuned as we're going to take a quick commercial break, but we're going to preview and look at some of the scores from last weekend and preview this upcoming weekend. And there was a pr couple pretty big matchups, a couple top ten teams, and so you'll want to see who won and who dominated and who lost. You're watching the Big Skin Preview. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Welcome back to the Pigskin Preview. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scores from last weekend. 
As we talked about, Western Illinois would beat the South Dakota Coyotes 24-10. A big game last week was North Dakota State number one against South Dakota State, another top 10 team. However, North Dakota State had a dominating performance, 20 to nothing. And the thing that I saw that was outstanding about that game was North Dakota State's defense held Zach Zenner to just four yards when he'd been averaging 180 plus yards. And for North, North Dakota State, it's a scary uh, front seven they have on defense. And then moving to the next game, Illinois State lost to Missouri State 37 to 10. That would be Missouri State's first win of the season. Youngstown State rallied back down 13 in the fourth quarter to Southern Illinois, against Southern Illinois. Northern Iowa, a top 10 matchup against McNeese State. They would just rip apart this team as they won 41 to six. McNeese State was ranked top 10 with Northern Iowa. However, now they fell back to 11. Northern Iowa really proving how dominant they are, showing how dominant this Missouri Valley Conference is, coach. And then Indiana State lost in the final minute to Tennessee Tech, 38 to 37. Looking at the standings, North Dakota State, Youngstown State, Western Illinois, and Missouri State all are up top with 1-0 victories in conference. Northern Iowa and Indiana State have yet to play a conference foe. And then South Dakota State, Southern Illinois, Illinois State, and South Dakota still looking for wins in conference after losing the conference opener last weekend. Looking at the weekend preview this weekend, Southern Illinois will travel to Brookings, South Dakota to take on the Jackrabbits. Missouri State will go to the Dakota Dome to face South Dakota. Youngstown State will take on Indiana State, the Sycamores, and then Northern Iowa will travel to the Fargo Dome, the Fargo Dome against North Dakota State. Another top 10 matchup for those two teams as Northern Iowa number four now, North Dakota State number one. And then finally, Coach, the most important matchup, Western Illinois will travel to Normal Illinois, take on the Illinois State Redbirds for homecoming, a very key matchup there, Coach. And then something that I've noticed this season about Illinois State is they've had some struggles this year. They currently only have the one victory, they are. They have lost their starting quarterback from last year, their leading receiver from last year, their leading rusher from last year, all through graduation. And so, how important is it to take advantage of this team while they're having a down year this year? It's usually, they're a very good program. Well, they're. They're. Uh, I don't think they're going to have a down year. They're. They're a very good football team. Um, that's going through the, the. The kinds of things that you go through when you lose a. Uh, you know, big group of seniors uh, like they lost last year. They. You know they're they're uh, getting experience to some younger players. Um, you know they're uh, they're a team that's got great personnel. Uh, they're very well coached. Uh, the game last week was a was a perfect example of if you turn the ball over more times than your opponent, uh, no matter who you're playing, you got a you you've got a chance to lose the football game. And and they turned the ball over against Missouri State and created situations where uh, uh, Missouri State had short field. The, uh, um, the one thing that, uh, that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move the football offensively. We're going we're to have to find ways to create scoring opportunities uh, better than what we've done here in the last couple of weeks uh, to, uh, to be successful Saturday. All right, and then the Leathernecks will take on the Illinois State Redbirds this weekend. It will be at 2 p.m. And so, Coach, going into the game, what do you expect out of the Leathernecks? Or out of the Redbirds, sorry. Um, they're, they're, uh, you know, they're a team that's uh, uh, going to play a very aggressive style of defense. Um, you know, they'll they'll play their four-man front. Uh, they'll come with pressure. Um, they uh, they've got good players in the front that are going to be able to put pressure on the quarterback. They're going to have to do a good job of protecting the quarterback in throwing situations. Uh, offensively, they're a balanced offensive football team. Uh, they're going to run the football. They've got a very experienced offensive line. Uh, all five starters return. They're big. They're physical. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, they're going to they're going to use uh, they've, they've used a couple of different quarterbacks. Both are excellent players. Uh, haven't really settled on on what they're doing there, but uh, capable of creating some big plays through the air. So they'll be a team that we've got to defend. Uh, you know both aspects. Um, and as I said, try to keep the ball away from. Them. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for you on the Pigskin Preview. I'm Andrew Bacon. He's Coach Bob Nielsen. Thanks for watching.